this weekend. What we're going to be working on is an Apple MacBook. The early 2008 model, it's black, it's the last of its generation, which means it's the EMC 2242, which gives it the Intel Core 2 Duo T8300, which is a 2.4 gigahertz dual core. Uh, it's a 64-bit processor, so it should still be very usable in today's standards. For some weird reason, though, it has a 64-bit EFI architecture, but it only supports 32-bit windows for native installs. Um, I'm still going to try 64-bit Linux on this, but we might end up only with 32. As for the graphics on this, it has the integrated Intel GMA X3100, which is just terrible in its own. Uh, the maximum, I'm pretty sure it's a 144 megabyte, and that's shared with the RAM. Uh, it does officially support four gigabytes of RAM. However, unofficially, it can support six gigabytes. It's still wireless and it has Bluetooth 2.0. Not that I'm gonna be using Bluetooth, but I could still hook up a wireless keyboard and mouse through Bluetooth if desired. It's a 13.3 inch display. Uh, the resolution is 1280 by 800. It's a TFT display, so it's by no means a good display, even for a budget laptop of today's standards. And it will give good battery life, and with the age of this thing, it's gonna need as much help with battery life as it can get. Now, the issue with it, is the display. It's broken. So I picked this up. It's um, hopefully still working. We're going to be optimistic about that. It has a 250 gig hard drive installed, but it's a 5400 RPM hard drive, and given the age, it probably has excessive amounts of use on it, like more than 20,000 hours, which is usually when the breaking period of hard drive starts. So we're gonna be swapping that out for a solid state. I'm gonna go for something around the same ballpark of storage capacity, so it's like a 250, 240, 256, if I can get my hands on it, whatever is the cheapest that I can find. This is gonna allow us to achieve the most performance out of this that we can get. The memory is only DDR2, so it's cheap. If I can get six to work, then we're gonna go with six. We're gonna check the battery. The battery's probably toast. These are known for having terrible batteries, so we'll probably end up replacing that down the road, get another 55 watt hour lithium polymer battery. We're gonna be installing Linux. I'm gonna be going with Linux Mint with the XFCE user interface, just because of how lightweight it is, it's gonna make this laptop extremely snappy. XFCE has a factory dark theme built into it. Black MacBook, a dark theme. The Apple logo on the back, we're actually going to try and make match the theme of the computer, try and make the Apple logo green. And then we're just gonna go over like a general cleaning, change the thermal paste, stuff like that. And we're essentially gonna try and make this a fully usable laptop in 2018. So first thing we're gonna wanna do is take the battery out. Once the battery is out, we'll be able to access the screens right in here for the memory. For that, we're gonna need a very small Phillips. Now we have access to the memory modules, which you can just pull this tab back and this tab. And here are the memory modules. Now the next step, we're gonna to wanna to take these three screws out. These two on the end are longer, one in the middle is shorter. Now with those removed, we can go back to the battery area here and take these screws out that were under the panel covering the memory. So again, these two are longer, this one's shorter. And we're gonna take the outer ones out. Both those screws are the same length. And now over to this area here. Now this one here, we're actually gonna be taking out the middle one. So there's three, two, two, and three. So we're gonna be taking the middle one out, and then the outer one, this, this outer one, and then the middle one. All four screws are the same length for this one. Now we can turn our attention to these screws on the back. So these ones are short, these ones are long. Now, we're gonna be going to the optical drive side and we're gonna be taking the two screws out here. Both of these screws are the same length. Now, we should be able to take the palm rest off and then disconnect the trackpad. With the top 
top removed. And in here you can see this little connector, this little black tab, and we can just pull straight up with that. Just like that. Now we can take this off. Now, the next thing is the hard drive. So we can pull this out, set aside for now, until we're ready for the solid state. We can take the optical drive out. These two screws on the side. screws are the same length. Now we can pull this connector up and then under there's another connector. We have another one right here. Pull that up. With this out of the way we can take these screws out by the speaker. There we are. So that one is very small and then bigger. Next thing we want to do is remove the light sensor. And this cable here should be able to lift the optical drive out. There we go. We have the optical drive. Yes, yeah, so there's these two screws here. With that screw out, we should be able to remove the speaker. We want to remove the microphone speakers, right speaker, and the subwoofer. We can take this screw out and then remove the antennas. These out. There's this little piece of foam we need to save. And then under that is another connector. And this is just like the speakers where you just kind of get under the plastic and just pry it up ever so slightly. Here. Long one, short one, and then again with this side, these two screws. Okay, now we should just be able to pry this up a little bit there, get that out of the plastic. And this one here, we should just be able to lift the display straight up. And we have these wires still under the subwoofer cable. And there we are. Now we have the display. Now what we need to do is take this bezel off. For that, we're just going to start at a corner. Let's try and work under it with a card. Like that. And then just slowly try and get all of the clips up. There we go. Some of these clips like to stay there, so we have to remember to put those back. Now we can take these little black corner pieces off. That's out. Now we have these three screws. And three. So they're all the same size. And this should just come up and pop off the bottom just like that. So if I recall correctly, this display backlight still worked so we're gonna leave that there and we need to take all of these screws out Okay. Now that's 
cleaned up. Now, I can take the razor blade. Make sure that's good. Just like that. Might have to do another layer. You can try that. Just go like this. There we go. Yeah, we'll do one more. Oh, which I guess I could have just... I don't see we have a little bit of light bleed there. Much better. Much better. Now we can put the display back together. That is very crusty. Let's see. Just crumbling away. That was that was long overdue, which would be why these had GPU failure all the time, and why you can get them very cheap online. Also, another thing is how excessive the thermal compound is. You can see right here, it actually almost came right off of the chip, and when that starts to get heat soaked, that's when we have problems. I clean these off a little bit better. Going to be using Arctic Silver 5 just a bit. And this one here, a little more. There we go. Okay. So we have this uh, crucial SSD. Yeah, it's 240 gigs. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. So we're going to take that and swap with the little drive. Caddy here. Just like that. There we go. The first thing we're gonna do here is download Rufus. So you can just download it right here, which I already did. And then we're gonna go to Linux Mint, go to download at the top here, and then we're gonna be downloading the XFCE user interface because that is by far the lightest. So. Given this is a dual core and currently only has two gigabytes of RAM, that's going to be extremely beneficial for us. Go to the 32-bit one here, download Torrent, or you can download from a mirror if you want, and 64-bit Torrent again, or one of the mirrors. I already have these downloaded, so first what we're going to do is open Rufus, and right here you can see that the USB drive is already recognized, so we're going to open this, and I'm going to try the 64-bit one first just because it is a 64-bit EFI architecture, even though it doesn't say that it supports 64-bit with Windows installs, but it doesn't say anything about Linux, so perhaps Linux, both being Unix as OS X, it might work in 64 bits. We're gonna try this first because we'll get a little bit of performance boost from that, especially running it not in bootcamp mode. We'll be running it natively, straight off of the uh, solid state. So here we go, start this. We're going to be writing in the DD image mode because this is a Linux image. And it's going to destroy all the data on the flash drive, which is totally okay. And now we wait. Okay, so this thing's done. So what we're going to do is close that, pop this USB stick out, and go back to the MacBook so we can uh, try and boot off this USB stick. We have the USB stick here. Pop this in the side. Power button and hold option. Okay, 
There we go. So we have EFI boot and EFI boot. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between these, but we'll just try the first one. Okay, so we can start Linux Mint there. So let's, um, wow, this is fairly responsive for what I was expecting, considering this is booting off of USB. So let's install Linux Mint. Okay, English. Let's install all the third party stuff. Actually, let's see, does the Wi Fi work? No. Wi Fi is not working. So let's grab an Ethernet cable. Okay, Ethernet. Plugged in. And it is recognized. Connection established. Perfect. Continue. Okay, so this is a blank drive. So we're just going to erase everything. So it's going to format the drive. Yep, we want to save all of this. TXT4. And we got to pick our region. Continue. Uh, username. What are we going to call this thing? Mintbook. Spacebar, log in automatically. Actually, we'll call it user. Perfect. User, mint book. Continue. <coughs> now we wait. Now we can restart the computer. Remove the installation medium and then press enter. Oh, I'll into Linux Mint. It's really responsive. Go to the dark theme. Much better. Wired connection. Let's see if it figured out Ethernet. So we're going to have to figure something out for the Wi-Fi. So we're going to use this one. The Airport Extreme. Flight Changes. There we go. Now we can restart the computer. I'm going to unplug the Ethernet. Now it says that there's Wi-Fi networks available. So we can go here and connect to the Wi-Fi. Go connect. And we are connected. We have Wi-Fi. That's it. We are ready to go. Everything works. All we gotta do now is clean it up and set the time. Okay. Icons. Icons. Just going to install NeoFetch. Clear that. Linux Mint 19, 64-bit, MacBook for one. And right here, running the XFCE user interface, 1280 by 800, We're using the dark theme. Intel Core 2 Duo, T8300, 2.4 gigahertz. Intel 965GM. Interesting that it's picking it up as that. So this is the uh, the G 
um, something X3100. So that's a little bit different. And we are using 500 of the two gigabytes of RAM. So we'll upgrade this to preferably six. We'll aim for six. We have the 240 gig solid state in this thing really fast. We'll test YouTube, make sure this works. Scrolling works. Volume works. Brightness works. Everything. Perfect, right out of the box. There's no stuttering with the video. It's perfect. So that was the MacBook for this weekend. I warned you the week before it was going to be a long video. It was over six hours to do all of that. It thoroughly sucked. I never want to do it again. But if you have time, you're short on cash, that's a pretty decent laptop. Now the part that everyone's been waiting for. Let's get to the B-roll. Okay, so that wraps it all up. See you guys next weekend.